you can download it from, uh, do you have an iPad? But there's, uh, okay, the, so y you follow our, our Twitter account, okay? You cannot, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. I'll do the presentation anyway, but please interrupt and make questions, okay? Just in case you have questions. <laughs> Good night, campuseros. We have Sergio Llorens, which is going to speak about 21 how how filters, how filters, how filters change content user experience. Okay. It was, it was difficult for you yeah. too. Eh? <laughs> thank you, Sergio. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Telefonica. Uh, for inviting me, um, I really appreciate it. I have 45 minutes to talk. It's going to be a little bit shorter. Please interrupt. Even if uh, you don't have questions, you should make questions, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, 21, um, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm 40 years old. Uh, we founded the GGGO group like uh, almost 10 years ago. And uh, back the last uh, four, five years, we have already launched like several startups between six and seven in several countries. Uh, several countries meaning Spain, Brazil, uh, Mexico, South Korea, and States, okay? So um, the total group turnover in terms of revenues has, has been around 8 million euros last year, and we are profitable, and uh, the fact that we are profitable, we've been investing on several startups. And now, today, I'm going to talk about one of them, which is 21, which is a startup being created internally with the employees of the company, okay? So let's go. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm 40 years old, and the things I'm busy right now in terms of my, ma my mind and, and what keeps me busy, it's uh, first my, my family. Uh, that's my wife. We're not supposed to be dressing like that all the time in Spain, but sometimes we do. Okay, my kids, uh, those are uh, my two kids. And um, something that really worries me also, uh, it's uh, how we are going to manage to pay 75 sal salaries in the next coming months. So this is something that really keeps me a little bit awake from time to time. And since I'm turning into um, I'm already turned into 40 like uh, a couple of months ago. I'm really kind of obsessed of being on shape and uh, training and uh, taking the bicycle. And with this guy, just to let you know, guys, um, in two weeks' time, we're going to be racing a mountain bike marathon of 750 kilometers between Madrid and Lisboa. So it's quite a challenge, even much more uh, challenging than speaking to almost anyone. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are four or five in the public already, so thank you very much. Can you just join us, please? Okay, what we do in GigiGo? Closer, closer. Uh, you're two girls and two boys, so come on, closer. <laughs> okay, very quick. Um, what do we do in GigiGo? Um, we do mobile marketing, we do mobile development, and we have mobile platforms, analytics, ad serving, and um, that's our core business. So B2B services is our core business. We do have also B2C. B2C meaning that we have our own services, our own mobile applications, our own mobile content being distributed on several stores. App Store, Google Play, Nokia, well, Microsoft now. So that's... Um, that represents more or less 40 by 40 f 45, 40% 40 of our revenues. Our group, um, the companies we have created or we have invested in, the companies are coming from several sources. Uh, um, companies created by the uh, uh, own employees working with us that have an idea and we just boost the idea, either technically from the product side or financially speaking from clients, from providers, and um, like other companies that might be adding value to the things we are doing with uh, our clients. That's the typical company 
where we normally uh, work with in terms of, let's say, startup or, or uh, startup boosting. Uh, those are uh, the, the companies we have invested in. We have uh, platforms such as Mosaic. Mosaic is a mobile ad server. Uh, we have also um, Metrica Mobile, which is an analytics uh, tool for app developers. It's for free. You can actually integrate uh, the platform into your app and you can see where the app is crashing and hence how you could improve it uh, in the next updates. Um, that's something we have already um, acquired like six months ago. And uh, today, tonight, uh, presentation is going to be about 21. 21 has been our last uh, startup being created like last year, uh, December last year. So what's 21? 20, I'm going to show you a video. I don't know if I can just make it like this. We live in a world where people communicate more and more through social networks. We have several networks with numerous friends, and we are continually adding more. But we still only have a limited amount of time, which makes it impossible for us to keep up to date with all of the content that our friends generate, and we often miss important things. 21 has been created to solve this problem. This service makes your life easier by intelligently filtering everything that is happening in your social networks. How does it work? First of all, we analyze your favorites to find out your likes and dislikes. Then we filter out anything you're not interested in. And finally, we highlight the stories that are most relevant to you. This means that the more you use 21, the easier it is for us to recognize your favorites and highlight your top stories. By doing this, 21 allows you to quickly locate the content you are most interested in. Watch your YouTube videos. Comment on your friend's Instagram photos. Retweet anything you want to share. Like your friend's Facebook posts. And all of this in a quick and simple way using your computer, tablet or smartphone. Simplify your social life with 21. Make the most of your time and above all, keep up to date with anything important that is happening in your social networks all in one place. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter or from our homepage www.21people.co. 21. Because people matter. So very simple. That's a service, that's an app that helps you log in with your Instagram, Twitter, Google+, uh, Facebook account. And uh, we help you to discover what is most relevant content for you and what is the most relevant people uh, to you. So we do it automatically. Uh, we, we will talk a little bit about technology afterwards, but that's a very simple concept. We don't want you to add new friends, to add new uh, followers, uh, but it's very simple. Uh, you're following 500 people, you have 100 uh, Facebook friends. We really give you uh, a very quick update on what's the most relevant content so that you cannot miss anything. So we change a little bit the user experience before staying like two, three hours per day on your social networks. With only 10 minutes, five minutes, you can check what's going on. That's a little bit the point. Let's talk a, li a little about, about the, the process. How we came up with the idea? Uh, uh, the idea came out like on uh, events like this one, like a campus party. Um, we were present um, on, with one of the speakers. That's a little bit um, uh, most important than myself in, in terms of speaking. So uh, this uh, entrepreneur, he's from the U.S. and he's one of the, um, let's say, kings of uh, e-commerce business in the U.S. and he's also speaker. And he's also a mentor, and he's like a bestseller um, author also. And once uh, he came over to Spain for an advertising event, and uh, after the, the talk, uh, when they were doing questions, one of the questions was, if you were going to invest in the future on business, what would be your uh, next vision on how the Internet is going to evolve? And he said, very simple, filters. So Google has now uh, shown that he's very good doing search, but in terms of the vast amount of, of content there is in the internet, there are no filters at all. No filters. So I would invest on filters. So that's the, f the first clue that gave us to create 21. The second one was a futurist. He's called um, himself, actually, futurist. And he's uh, hired on many events to talk about the future, the business future, the technology uh, future. And he more or less mentioned the same. Uh, he, tol he told to the audience, uh, listen guys, can you imagine in the near future, everyone has patterns in life. 
uh, you go back to school in September to the university, uh, you go more or less um, on holidays in uh, July, August, during Christmas time, you leave the school and you go back to your family. So can you imagine that you might have a service in the future that helps, helps you out to find a ticket, a flight ticket automatically, helps you out to um, get uh, rent uh, and, uh, to, a, uh, to a, an apartment in London where you are studying. So these type of patterns can be filtered and hence can be automatis automatized in the future. So that both th these two factors gave us the idea of creating 21. And obviously, the feedback was also spread out in the company with uh, the people using Facebook and Twitter, which are many of them in our company, by the way. And they uh, actually saw the potential when you are studying, working, and going home late at night, you don't have time to check your, your timeline. So it's good if some, someone summarizes what's going on in your social, social networks. So there was a little bit the concept where we came up um, with the idea. Okay, um, in terms of content and internet, to go on a little bit with the thoughts we put behind to create the service was uh, like 10 years ago, the way you check internet was very simple. You, 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 you would go to MSN, Yahoo, uh, to these vertical portals where you have all the information, sports, the weather forecast, uh, news, everything related with um, content. But now things are, have changed the, from the past five years. Now, us, the users, through the social networks, are the ones creating most of the content in internet. But big deal, like with a big difference. Users are the kings of content in internet right now. And just check your usage of internet. Most of the time you go, you don't go to the BBC. Dot co dot uk. You go to your Facebook, your Twitter, or your, or your social networks. That happens most of the time. So things have changed dramatically. Uh, before, news were spread out in, in a way of broadcasting, one to many, and now it's the user itself that has become the, the content creator. So um, the users itself, us, we are content also, and we are very relevant content to our friends, to our family, to the people that uh, uh, follow you. So uh, that's very important. So it's so important that even brands, companies, and uh, like digital, uh, all the, the pieces of the uh, value chain in the, in the internet, all of them, that are redefining a little bit what's a customer in internet. Um, um, like uh, 10 years before, a customer would be something that potentially would buy your product. But now a customer is some, someone that can recommend can create content of, of your brand, can actually uh, multiply a negative or a positive experience through uh, uh, networks like very easily, and can actually talk about your product almost on real time. Checking in restaurants, tweeting, um, I've had a good, bad experience in this theater, or um, I like this movie, I don't like this movie. And by the way, negative impact spreads out in internet like seven times faster than positive impact. So, Brands, um, they, they are changing the way they are treating uh, customers through social networks. Because the power of content right now belongs to us, the users, and not really to the brands or to the broadcasters. Okay? So, just to give you a few examples to show some light about what I'm talking about when I'm talking about filters. Uh, I'm sure you have already heard about content curation. So, um, content curation is a kind of filter. So. Um, the uh, newspapers, uh, magazines, and uh, the classical broadcasters in internet, they have already been aggregated through, th through different services. So, so the most important one right now, well known, is Flipboard. Flipboard, Flipboard help, helps you to discover new content in internet by aggregating different sources of, of news from magazines, newspapers, uh, digital websites, so that you can actually discover new content. So that's one thing they have already done. But we are not on this war. So social, uh, sorry, uh, news aggregation and content aggregation is something that has been already, let's say, occupied by several big players. We are a little bit different, but we are doing the same with social networks. So that's, uh, don't try to understand that, it's quite difficult. So, um, but that's the map of how newspapers in, in internet, they think the value is. So uh, before the value was just content and you, you either you pay or you get revenues from advertising. Now newspapers and magazines and content owners and internet, they have realized that value can be also on, on real time. So sports, uh, um, uh, value can be also on design, 
Uh, just imagine a website, a very well uh, designed website, and regardless the quality of the content can be also of a certain value to you. So we are, I don't know if that has a, yes. So um, for us, uh, seeing this mapping uh, towards social network, we are trying to do this, this part of the, of the mapping. So we try to do filter summaries, but we try to focus on what is m the most relevant. W what should you be uh, looking for when you are going to Facebook, on Twitter, on your or Instagram, on Google Plus? Relevancy and filtering. Questions so far? Willing to have a beer afterwards? Yeah, my beer. Yeah. I'll, I'll be fast. Okay, so um, again. Um, who is creating content? Ourselves, our friends, our family, um, our sister-in-law. Uh, so everyone is creating content. The users are the king, and um, everyone is creating content. So can we actually uh, filter this? And uh, the, the, the point is, is, is we should actually filter, because uh, as you see in these graphs, um, the content creation and content sharing in internet is growing exponentially from the past years, and it's going to grow even faster in the, in the coming years. So um, what's the point of this old fashion of content aggregation of trying to find new, f new friends, new followers, new content, and aggregate them into your timeline? Your timeline is already packed of information. So what's the point of, of gathering new content to create even a, a more complex and bigger uh, timeline? So our idea is actually uh, listen, you have already uh, more than 500 uh, friends um, with Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you add Google+, LinkedIn, uh, Tumblr, and other local social networks, you might reach 1,000 friends. That's uh, statistics coming from, from social networks itself. So what's the point? So uh, you might think that first you should actually try to understand and to uh, not to let's say, miss any important and relevant information from your existing friends. Because as, um, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, the good point of it. Um, that's uh, Durban, Dunbar, sorry. Dunbar is um, antro an English anthropologist that came up with a, a very, uh, let's say, complex study of the brain saying finally in bottom line that our brain, the human being brain, is only capable of managing 150 relationships. Everything mixed. So uh, your mommy, daddy, your Facebook friends, Instagram friends, your school friends, your work friends. So 150. And only on the digital world, on average, each of us, we have 500. So don't you think it would be nice to have something that helps you out to actually mm, manage your 500 friends like and no, don't miss important things and relevant things so that was a little bit the key part of our idea and the key part of the key part of the concept of 21 okay filters are very important um, i'm going to go quick through this slide um, you might know already but but now that why filters are important 500 people creating content it's if it's like you cannot uh, check your timeline in Twitter. It's impossible, unless you have eight hours per day. And so someone has, actually. But um, if you're working, studying, or like doing a normal life, you might not have it. So filters are important. And that's where 21 is sitting. We gather the information from social networks. We filter. And we come up with a recommendation on who is your, let's say, the people you should take care in terms of uh, following, uh, in terms of content relevance, in terms of this person is a person you should actually um, uh, follow and uh, take care about the news they, they are spreading out. This type of recommendations is what we are trying to do. So we are doing filters in order to come up with recommendations on stories and followers. Okay, so... Um, we started up the company, uh, as I told you at the very beginning of the, uh, of the presentation, on December last year. So uh, we used uh, um, uh, to start up businesses, um, uh, we call it uh, the MVP approach, which is the minimum viable product. So uh, we came across with the idea, we started sketching the app, and uh, uh, one of the programmers started to develop, like manually, 
these filters and uh, how the manually meaning that you gather Facebook information, Instagram information, you put it together and you select the pieces of information you might think a good recommender would, would do. So we started by, by creating the concept and using the concept internally inside the office, like with a simple web. So we prototype and when we came up with uh, like a stable, so to speak, uh, value, a product and a service, we launched it. We should have launched it if you, if you would have seen the statistics on Android and iOS, which are the most uh, relevant platforms in terms of smartphones and, and tablets. But we actually reached an agreement with uh, Microsoft and Nokia, which is now the same. Um, back uh, last year, they loved the project and they uh, actually offer us the possibility of gaining visibility in Microsoft platforms in Windows 8 store and, and Windows Phone store in exchange of six months exclusivity. So we put apart iOS developments and we start focusing on Windows 8 and Windows Phone, which at the end of the day, it was okay for us because we tested uh, the service and we tested with real clients in not really very important platforms, which is Windows 8 and Windows Phone. And during these six months, what we did was to launch continuously new versions in order to get feedback from the user, most of the time negative feedback, and to come up by now with a much more or less like a good product. So six months of one star, one star, what the hell, it doesn't work, what type of recommendations, um, I don't understand the service, I cannot even configure my, 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 my accounts. This type of feedback was really positive to us because when we launched an iPad, everything was more or less polished but we are still on beta. I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, we are still on beta uh, beca because uh, the algorithm uh, be uh, behind these recommendations is something that we are giving feedback continuously in terms of programming and in terms of what the users are, are telling to us. So um, at the very beginning, we ponder a lot the popularity of content in order to uh, recommend. But if you are follow following Obama, Every tweet that Obama does, it might be recommended to you. So uh, that's a little bit tricky in terms of how the algorithm works, but we are working on that. And now the algorithm is working more or less the way we thought it should work, but it needs improvement also. Okay, very quick, um, funding. Um, um, that's bootstrapping, uh, meaning that we uh, actually in invested from cash generated from the group in this uh, s new startup. And um, the way we do startups, more or less, is uh, uh, the first thing, when, when you create a startup, a startup, you need to think that funds uh, might need to come up from revenues, as simple as that. So don't think that angel investor is going to come with one million pounds to fund your company, because that rare, rarely happens. So first, you need to think that the company needs to be sustainable and you need to create revenues in order to actually um, fund your company, as simple as it, as it is. Afterwards, if uh, you are not generating revenues enough, we would recommend, so to speak, um, to get silly money. Silly money meaning uh, going to public institutions, to research centers, to um, uh, partners, clients that might be willing to uh, actually uh, giving you money in exchange of almost anything. So a research in institution would give you a help for starting up the businesses, a very low interest rate loan, for instance, that type of things are much more um, efficient at the very beginning that a VC or a business angel, a VC, a business angel, they are going to try to get into your business uh, even if they don't know anything about your business. But silly money comes to a, a, a certain point that it's, need, it's needed and uh, there is a bank that it's going to be taking care that you, you repay or reimburse the loan in the near future and that's all. So that's uh, the first and the two and the second point is what we are doing right now. But uh, before the end of this of, of this year, we will be going to certain VCs here in the UK and uh, in San Francisco in California to ask for the second round of of, of investment in order to get some more traction, uh, funds for marketing, for platform to be established in San Francisco and and stuff. Okay, technology, uh, two things that you might heard a lot during these last uh, two years. Um, machine learning. So um, 
and um, you might also have um, um, I also I've been this afternoon and this evening also uh, hearing some um, of the startups and and you see you clearly see that they have already gone through some these venture capital visits because they are using most of the time um, a word which is holistic approach so uh, holistic approach meaning predictions okay so uh, now in, in in the VC world they are looking for all the time for uh, uh, algorithms, um, uh, uh, holistic approach of uh, algorithms, and predictions, and, and all this type of stuff. So, the um, technology it's uh, behind this algorithm is a typical machine learning approach. So, the user has to interact with the application and with their social networks in order to see and to understand what's relevant to them. But the idea at the end of the day is that uh, this algorithm predicts what you might be willing to have in the future. So no, it's, uh, the, the analysis is going to be uh, uh, faster and the services is going to be of a higher quality. So that's a little bit the, the approach we're doing with the algorithm. By the way, we haven't, we haven't done that yet. So uh, now we are mapping the users, uh, getting feedback from the, from the users uh, doing in the application, what the things, uh, what likes are doing in Facebook, what things are retweeting in, in, in Twitter, these type of things are what we are crunching and analyzing in our algorithm. But this is the, our second level, which is the machine learning. And another thing is big data, like, uh, it's like uh, that's like Michael Jackson in the 80s. It's very popular right now. So uh, big data, big data, um, we are performing like uh, 32,000 um, um, analysis and recommendations per month, uh, sorry, per week, which is not big, but uh, we had only 100,000 downloads in some months. So uh, if we want to scale up, we might need to have a big structure of big data, software and hardware in order to scale up. So those are the two things in terms of, te of technology that, that we are doing right now. Okay. So um, just to mention that how the, the, uh, the filter works uh, very quickly, because I've already just mentioned before. So we gather information from social networks, the things you like, you check like, the things you comment, the things you follow, the things you unfollow, the, the things you retweet, who you answer on Twitter, who you like in Instagram, what type of likes in a historic level you've, you've done in Instagram. Those are things we put together. We analyze also the things you're doing inside the app. If you're clicking the links, if you are liking from the application, if you are uh, selecting people to follow inside the application or not, we put it together, we create um, a uh, user mapping that has impact also on the business on, on a business level afterwards. We create a map of users, and we put it together to create recommendations. Okay, so that's the way it works right now. The way it should work in the future is, as I told you before, predictions. We want to predict what you are going to love. Okay. So um, the service evolution. Obviously, the service evolution goes through. Uh, you have to have uh, all your we don't have, for instance, Tumblr. We don't have YouTube. We don't have um, uh, like local uh, social networks as, as in Spain, 21, or uh, like uh, fl flirting uh, uh, networks. We don't have them inside also. So those are things we want to add on because those are things that you could add because those social networks work with APIs, with pub public APIs. So those are things we want to, uh, to include here. We want also to um, work on different channels also. HTML5 for browsing, and also smart TVs. Smart TVs, it's like a, a big, uh, uh, let's say, uh, we don't know if this is something that is going to impact in our business, but this is something we need to stare at, at least, and to see how it's going to evolve. But we think also that uh, most of the smart TVs are going to be compliant with HTML5, so at the end, with one single pl platform, HTML5, we, we, we might be able to cover everything. So. Um, and many other things. Um, remember, user mapping uh, in algorithm, that's something that we are going to be using for this, to pay salaries. Advertising. So um, we are gathering information. We know what the people are liking. We are creating maps of users in order to actually sell advertising. So it's what Facebook is doing with our personal data, but we will be doing with segments. 
So people like in sports, uh, pe people from um, 18 to 25 uh, like to travel, this type of mapping of things we, we will be doing. Okay, so business model. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to be advertising. We're already testing it in um, Windows 8. And uh, we will be testing in iOS Premium. So advertising, uh, uh, the, the application is free to download. And you can do most of the things is going to be free. But certain things are going to be premium. If you want to add more Twitter accounts, you might need to pay. We don't know if it's going to be a subscription or a paper, whatever. But it's going to be premium. This is something we need to test. Um, if you want to... Um, also access to your Facebook pages, groups, and whatever. This is something that is going to be also premium. And things such as uh, offline modes and uh, like other type of value-added services inside the application, they might be also premium. So the idea is to test advertising and uh, like native advertising, like uh, nothing like banners, uh, but advertising integrated in your, uh, let's say, timeline, OK? Uh, the first one, we are already testing it. And the second one is about to be tested before the end of this year. OK, we are about to finish uh, so that we can have time to have some beers. And it seems like there is a concert afterwards. So that's going to be like a little bit funnier than what I'm talking to you. So uh, in terms of traction, we had um, like around 100 and some thousand downloads um, in the last uh, five months. We have also um, preloaded this application in certain Nokia Lumia's devices in Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Mexico. That ca accounts, we don't know, we don't, uh, Nokia doesn't even know on how many, but that might count also on another 100,000 extra. We are having um, like uh, almost 20, uh, unique, 20,000 users, unique users per month. And as I told you before, we are performing 35,000 recommendations per month. I told you per week, it's per month. So still very tiny, but we have already uh, uh, testing the proof of concept, which is a little bit what we are doing right now. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's the first price. <laughs> the, um, we've been in Las Vegas like uh, two months ago, only for working, so don't think about anything weird. So just working in Las Vegas. And uh, we... Uh, there were like tw 250 companies presenting services and, and projects. And we were the second ones in, um, in one of the categories, which was the categories uh, being voted by the general public. It was on online pick. So you try the service, and afterwards you, 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 you vote. And we were the second ones. Um, what's next? We want to scale up. But before that, we need to literally have a very good product. We have a good concept, but that, that needs to be work in order to be a good, a good product, a very good product, OK? That's the only way that we can engage users. Um, traction, traction needs money. Uh, we need to invest on marketing. Even if I, I've seen a couple of speakers saying that uh, we reach 1 million downloads in the Google Play without doing marketing, that's one among 100. Most of the time, you, 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 you need marketing. so. We might need money also to get some more traction, some more users, OK? So monetization, we are, uh, we are trying to advertising and premium. We need to see what's best. A mixture, both of them, none of them, uh, advertising, uh, premium. This is something we are testing right now, OK? And we want to actually reach very nice and uh, VCs. Nice and VC shouldn't be in the same sentence, but let me just be risky, very nice venture capitalist in order to help us out to scale. And I think that was about all. Um, no questions uh, so far. I told you, you guys to interrupt a little bit, but you were thinking about the beers and the concerts instead of uh, 21. By the way, um, Windows 8 and Windows Phone, but if you have iPads, please uh, download it. Have a try and drop me a tweet, uh, whatever, email. I'll give you my business card, your two, three, four, so you can uh, give me feedback directly, okay? Hi. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, what feedback you've got that people actually want to filter their information. You know, it just seems that the, the kind of person that has that many social networks going at one time is probably the kind of person that has a lot of time and likes 
uh, digesting a, a lot of information. Um, I can see how it's very promising from a data perspective and tracking behavior, but from an actual user perspective, uh, that kind of person, like, have, have you had feedback that, that people want uh, this kind of thing? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, can you just, yeah. Are you a busy person right now? Yeah. Do you consider uh, yourself yeah. busy? So you study, you work, or? Uh, well, actually, at the minute, no, I'm not very busy. <laughs> okay, okay. No. Okay, um, I'm not supposed to be into social networks. Uh, I'm not the typical guy posting everything on Facebook and, and, and tweeting and Instagramming all the time. But I do have LinkedIn, Google+, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, um, and no flirting sites or whatever, <laughs> not, not yet. And... and uh, and even local social networks, and not really the kind of people that sh I'm, I'm going to stay like more than just 10 minutes per day or five minutes per day checking. So um, most of the people have already Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Google Plus. So uh, the point is, um, all have the same social networks. Even with three, four, you have already like 500 re relationships to manage. So um, there is an opportunity to see if the filters can actually add value to you. The feedback we had at the very beginning was, you are narrowing too much your recommendations. Even if I have only five, 10 minutes, I, I would like to check the rest of the content also through 21. Because at the very beginning, the first part that we have was, um, we help you to select your 21 best friends in Instagram, your 21 best friends in Facebook and in, in Twitter. And we come up with a certain, wow, I like the application, I like the concept, but what is going on with the rest of the friends? Can I actually check the rest of the friends? And now inside the applications you have 21 recommendations, but you can check the, ho the, 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 the rest of the content. So that's, a, and the, the feedback at the very beginning was uh, first this, secondly, slow, because um, big data, a lot of information to check, um, you need to have it on real time. And at the very beginning, in order to make recommendations, we took 35, 30, uh, 40 seconds to do recommendations. So just imagine with your iPad, like 35 seconds doing like this, like with a spinner. Zzz. Now it's a little bit faster, recommendations are approved, so. But download the application, okay. I can track your, your, your download, so. <laughs> Do you have any more questions? So and you both, th that you were the last ones, you don't have any questions? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do it for you. Um, have you got girlfriends, you both, or? <laughs> okay, so that's, that's it. <laughs> you owe me one, okay? <laughs> so thank, thank you, you very much. much. I hope Cambuceros have enjoyed. Thank you. Job. And see you. Thank you very time. much. Gracias. <laughs>